So I was asked to take a look at this wall that previously had a crack in it, but it had been patched up numerous times. At the time of my visit, I didn't take a picture of the wall, but the size of the patch had to be about this big. The first assumption is that the foundation was settling, but there was no foundation underneath the wall. The wall was non-load bearing. There was a floor joist that sat directly underneath the wall that was replaced. However, the wall continued to crack after this floor joist was replaced. I'm not gonna lie, I was very confused. But then I saw this and, huh. This is interesting. This is a ceiling joist. This ceiling joist was cut to retrofit the attic opening I'm standing in. Now I'm not positive if this wall had been an issue prior to the renovation, but nonetheless, I think this is the problem for the crack. I also think this problem highlights another issue that I typically see, that problem being the lack of understanding of the structural elements inside of the building, which results in builders, contractors, or DIYers making bad judgment calls that are ultimately the start of problematic situations. And in this case, I think it's not understanding that these ceiling joists are actually structurally necessary in order for this roof to function properly. This home is a single story home with a rafter roof system. At the roof peak is a ridge board, not to be confused with a ridge beam. This is extremely important to understand because this changes how the roof functions structurally in order to get those loads down to the foundation. In this case, when roof loads such as the weight of the structure, snow, and other roof live loads, act on top of the roof rafter system. A lateral thrust is created at this point, which must be resolved inside of the structure. The ceiling joists are what's responsible for resolving that lateral thrust force. Otherwise, without these ceiling joists, the home would begin to take on a shape like this. I think this lateral thrust is being resolved in this wall. Why? Well, the rafter that's cut is attached right at this opening. This attachment happens right over top the location of where the wall is. This wall is obviously not designed to be able to handle this lateral thrust, which is why I think this wall just continues to crack and crack over time. Had an engineer been hired to work on this situation, one of two things would have likely been done. The first is that the attic opening would have been sized to fit in between the ceiling joists, or the ceiling joists could have been re framed in such a way, maybe something like this, to accommodate the opening by transferring the lateral thrust safely around the opening. But because I think the builder or contractor didn't recognize this as a structural member of the roof system, this error was made. So first and foremost, read the code. Everything that I just mentioned in this video, you can literally find right in the code. Sometimes the code is difficult to read, but there are resources out here that give you a more visual representation of what the code is talking about. You start working on a project, please do what you can to retain a structural engineer. A structural engineer that you'll feel comfortable with reaching out to if you have any types of questions or you're just curious about something. Have them come out and validate the structure with you to make sure that what you're seeing is exactly what's going on and you have the backing of a structural engineer. But I do understand that retaining an engineer for most of your projects, that's expensive. Budgets are tight timelines are tight. So let me ask you this question. Are you really willing to accept the risk and the consequences associated with making the wrong decision? In another area of the building, I took a picture of this, this uh, floor joist they cut to be able to install a plumbing line and like the joist is literally just dangling from the sheathing. <laughs> Y'all don't, don't do this.